My name is Davin Sturdivant, and this AIM Learn Fast video is about how to compare the fastest lap of two tests in Race Studio. So I race competition carts, and I'm also a writer for Cart Pulse, which is designed to gather information about the sport of karting and put it into an easy to find place. So when I got in touch with Roger Cadell, who's the national trainer for AIM Sport, we decided to put together some videos about how to use karting data in Race Studio. We've broken them up into these little mini vignettes, hopefully to make it easy to consume. But if you have questions about whatever we cover, just leave a comment below and we'll put it in another video. So I'm going to turn it over to Roger and take it from there. So sometimes when I compare sessions back to back, you know, I've made some change that'll make that second session just so much faster. You know, uh, I'll, I'll put on new tires or I'll change the front alignment. And I really just want to know where did I find that time, um, especially if it's a big enough jump. It, is there a way to kind of compare two sessions together so I can say, oh, when I put on new tires, I'm really seeing it here. Or like when I change the alignment, I'm really finding it in another corner. You know, axle changes or you what, mm -hmm. whatever happened to whatever. be right or dri driving line changes whatever yeah. the uh one of the biggest questions i get is 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 folks pretty quickly get the hang of opening their test and and start to look at data and then they understand they can look at two two laps and you know start bringing you know, good and away from the money channels you know lateral g's or you know rpm or whatever it happens to be but um i do get a call quite a bit you know okay uh, my buddy sent me his data and i want to compare his best lap versus my best lap right mm -hmm. something to that effect and so um you can you, we can do that just as easily in the in the in the software it, it looks just like you're comparing two of your own laps so the way you do it is you import the test right or, or if you if if it's two of your own in, in your example you've got them in your list of your from your test database and the and the way that you grab them is instead of just opening the one just highlight highlight both right and you can do that with normal windows functionality you can hit the shift key or the the control key and and you highlight the two tests you want to open right and then you can uh, you can come down here to the lower left hand corner you can click on open test uh, every once in a while I'll show you some different ways of doing things you can also right click and and click on open test right so uh, any number of different ways to do things so so I've just opened those two tests at the same time and when you do that, there's just a couple of tiny changes that, you, that you'll notice pretty quickly in the in the in the software in the in the user interface. And mm -hmm. and what uh, what you'll see here is we're we've got a lot of tabs. We uh, we've talked in other videos about the measures tab and the laps tab and the user profile tab. So there's three tabs in the measures and laps toolbar, and there's tabs for every function that you open up here across the bottom, you know, right below the main window. Uh, but when you open up a second test, now you have you know, SEMA qualifying, you know, we can just click on that tab and we're just looking at the qualifying best lap from qualifying. You can click on your practice lap. Since we opened it, of course, the fastest lap of each test is automatically opened. And so now there's, or we can look at just SEMA practice, or you'll always end up with this test compare button. And if you click on that tab, you're looking at each test on top of it, on top of each other, right? Mm. So it's uh, it's really handy to look at that. And then across the bottom, you've got your test laps toolbar down here across the bottom. And it's the same thing. You've uh, you've got SEMA qualifying, and, and we can change change laps like we've talked about in other videos. And uh, you can click on the other tab for practice, and we can change those laps. So be aware that the, uh, the you've got tabs that, you know, for each of the two different tests that we may have opened, we may have, you know, four tests. We may have your qualifying, and, you know, you might have, you might be a, a group of three or four guys and and you're uh, and you're all sharing you're going to look at all of them so you know, we may have four laps across here you know four tests and looking at all, all of those guys' tests you know their, their best lap a quick and easy way to find the, the data with the tab um, if you have the test compare bar or tab open and you're going between laps um, does it keep your lap synced or can you have like lap five for me but lap seven for my buddy and lap 10 for another buddy yeah yeah right now we're on six and and uh and lap six on the in the other test app you know, ironically is is the fastest lap but if i i can go over here and you know slide it over to lap four mm. and as soon as i go back to the practice it's still on the lap that you left it on which is lap six so oh, they do okay. not stay synced as far as you know when you were on the qualifying session but the uh so it's whichever lap you decide to choose mm. the interesting thing on the time compare bar which you've talked about in the past is whichever the fastest two of the two you have uh, selected in the time in the test laps toolbar is the fastest lap. So uh, is the flat line. So in this case, the blue one 
on on qualifying is the fastest lap but if i slide it over this way this lap's a little quicker and this lap's even quicker but as mm -hmm. soon as i jump over here where the blue one was the slower of the two boom the red one ends up being the reference lap in the time mm -hmm. bar so mm -hmm. it's a very uh it's changing real time so mm -hmm. whatever you select the software does what you expect it to do so mm -hmm. i'm gonna go back to the fastest lap for each one which was lap six okay and uh let's look up here in the upper corner we can look at the his best lap in practice was a 101.7, and the best lap in qualifying was a 101.5. Mm -hmm. So what in this particular case, they uh, had the same setup. You know, every, everything was the same except for a uh, new set of tires. Mm -hmm. So um, new sticker set of tires for qualifying, and, and we went off. And if you look at the time compare bar, and you, you can come there, you know, slide over here to the left, and it does the math for you. It's about 1.17 seconds faster. Mm -hmm. And then you start to study the time compare bar. And it, when it, it's interesting, you can start to look at um, where do you think tires would be faster, you know, just thinking out loud in our heads. You know, obviously, it's going to be in the corners, right, you know, you typically, or especially the higher speed corners where you can really lay on those new tires. And, and what you'll see in the time compare bar is acceleration zones. The time compare bar will be basically flat. Mm -hmm. And then where there's acceleration or areas where you can run through the middle of a corner, you'll see these where they, it starts to trend up. And then it'll go flat again where you know where, uh, where where you weren't faster, and then boom, all of a sudden, you know, it trends up, and then kind of you know kind of levels off a little bit, levels off a little bit. So you, it, it, new tires will almost always show, you know, that kind of a trend. Let's say it was a an axle or brakes or something you changed. The areas where there'll be difference in the time compare bar will be the areas where it was faster. Say if it was a, better brakes or you know it, you were able to go deeper in the braking areas where you'll see the big difference so uh, it, the time compare also will give you tips and tricks on where to look for for, for the faster area yeah, and I think it's probably important to mention, too, when you talk about things like new tires, how important it is to just make one change when you're comparing data, if that's what you're looking for. Because I know some people get so carried away, like, I want to do A, B, C, D, and E. And then all of a sudden, they have this massive jump in lap time, but they don't know what was the variable that actually caused it, right? So in this yeah. case, I can say, clearly, new tires, going through six and seven, you found a bunch of time great right yeah. the track is probably a little bit more rubbered in but i'm going to give you mostly new tires because everyone's still there right but if you throw an axle at it and tires at it well now i have no idea right the uh, cart's it, just it, faster yeah absolutely the and 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 this is a an a a b difference right so mm -hmm. uh it, whatever whatever the crew did whatever the driver did whatever whatever we changed you know, this is showing what happened right yeah. and, and if, it, if if you were to have done a, a jetting change an axle change and a and a tire change well you, you threw the kitchen sink at it right but right. then then it becomes a, a an issue of okay well how do we break that down mm -hmm. and um and we'll do that in another video but when you have a, a performance thing like a say you did a jetting change and you got more performance out of the engine you will see different areas where it was faster right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so in this case it's tires so the blue we rolled through this corner much quicker at the blue but look at the look at the the, the actual acceleration rate let me get the cursor out of the way the actual acceleration rate up this straightaway right. notice that yeah. you, the way you, you start to look at acceleration rates you, absolutely the blue one was faster if I click right here the blue one is you know 0.9 uh, yeah, 0.9 miles per hour faster but we we should work on a uh, on the concept of you know parallel versus converging versus diverging lines right mm -hmm. so the uh, in this case the blue one was had better exit speed but the difference between the two basically remains the same all the way up right. so the right. exit speed was faster but the performance of the engine and the acceleration rate was actually very much the same the same and if yeah. you would have done a, uh, a a jetting change as well we could have looked in just this little area here and we could have understood the performance difference of the acceleration side and the performance of you know in in the middle of a corner that the tires really affected so there uh, there you can the old adage of well, change one thing at a time i'm I, I still am. You know, I, I kind of believe in that at some level, but with data, new modern you know data analysis techniques, we can yeah. break apart a corner speed, a braking area, and, a, and an acceleration zone. Mm -hmm. So you can do you know on that practice day when you're coming up to that very last one, that very last uh, uh, practice day, and you want to really try two different things. Eh, as long as they don't affect the same thing, right. we can make two, two changes. And I think it also helps too that the data here, the driver is fairly consistent. 
because I know that when I talk to some people about data, you know, especially if it's a new track to them or they're newer to the vehicle they're driving, sometimes the laps are all over the place. And so they're trying to compare like one really crappy lap they just did to a lap that was some way decent. And it's hard to really give any useful information out of that because you're still learning. So, I mean, it's useful, but at the same time, it's it's easier to go against laps that are somewhat similar or like on a track you have a good rhythm on, or at least you feel like you do, so that <laughs> you can at least say, ah, I clearly made an improvement here, rather than just, you know, natural learning curve sort of stuff. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. But data, but think of data in this case, the driver is really consistent and, and good for him. Mm-hmm. And, and the new tires, we can actually pick out those spots. But yep. it's just as valuable if you find areas that the driver's inconsistent, then you can work on that piece as well. So the also data fair, is the yeah. data, right? And it, yeah. and, uh, it is telling us what, the, what we need to work on, which yeah. is kind of handy as well. Also fair, also fair. Perfect. So let's study this one just a little bit on on the tires, right? You know, people people will ask, you know, okay, I put on a new set of tires. Did, where where did it help me? And I'm just studying this the speed trace really quickly. So we know the kind of the what happened, right? The, yeah, the car uh, on, the, on the blue lap, is, you know, certainly the middle ape was able to get after the throttle earlier on this, and 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 darn it, it's a uh, you know four four and a half miles per hour, you know, better better running up this straightaway, all all good, and then. Uh, and and on the middle of this corner it was quicker. In the middle of this corner it was quicker. And the and this the, this high speed 90 it, it, it's quicker. Okay, yeah, that that all makes some sense. But let's bring up uh, you know let's bring up lateral G's and, and longitudinal G's and 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 uh, and study. Oh, it was better in the corners, but but let's look at these lateral G's and 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 you can kind of study where the driver's getting on the throttle earlier. Was it because of you know, mid corner speeds. Was it truly getting better? You know, cornering forces. And 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 while it's small, you know, we could zoom in and and, and get a better idea. But, but boy, we can just kind of click right here, right? And and 1.86 versus 1.7. So there's 1600 uh, G's. You know, we can come to you know that you know, early on in the middle of this corner, it was substantially higher right there, right? Mm-hmm. Three to a seven. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the the peak on this braking zone and getting ready to, t- to turn in there at this apex, it was you know, 1.9 versus 1.6, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you can look along here on all these right-hand corners and see that there was a lot of uh, in- increased in- increased Gs. Heck, there's one here that the driver w- was better before, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, on the red lap was actually better. That's one area that the driver could have improved on that corner even more. Mm-hmm. It w- w- very little doubt, right? Mm-hmm. A little bit higher on the on the blue Gs here on, on average on this one. This return one here about the same on, on, on the G rate. So just some interesting things to look at. And then on the longitudinal G's, you know, on the braking side, boy, look at that, quite a bit more, used quite a bit more braking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, young driver, is the driver just stepping it up for, for qualifying or are the tires actually giving them a braking, you know, greater braking? Well, we would have to, you know, understand it a little bit better. But mm-hmm. one, two, those first two corners, much more braking. You know, this mm-hmm. this, this braking zone here, not not so much. Uh, here, the, the must have probably drove it in or, you know, something odd happened because uh, – had to release the brakes quite a bit on the mm-hmm. on the qualifying lap there and, and uh, uh, really being aggressive in, in, yeah. in that corner. And you can actually see the speed trace doing the same thing. But because he had new tires, he was able to roll through the middle of that and actually, you know, probably could have pushed this braking zone a little farther out if it was able to break and get roll through the middle at that speed, right? Mm-hmm. So li- little things like that we can look at and try to try to help the, the driver understand areas. Okay, when you put on new tires on this cart, you know, one of the, the things that we always ran into when we were into karting, we would put on new tires and the car, the cart would almost always understeer a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And uh, so while because we had data and because we kept decent records and, and we could see certain things happening when we went to bolt on new tires, we would also, you know, free up the, free up the cart a little bit to make sure that the, uh, the understeering didn't happen. Right. So yeah. we knew that his driving style or the, the driver's driving style and that particular chassis and that particular tire by having some data and being able to, to keep track of everything. We knew that we needed to, to do something to reduce the understeer when we put on new tires and then start to back that off as the tires, uh, as the cart settled down within the, and the, the tires got a little bit older so mm. just uh interesting stuff when you when you we, this was just two laps you know and we were able to bring them both up and and just like we were able to compare you know lap you know six and seven from one test 
we can just as easily bring in a second test and compare the data. And because it's GPS and because it's all aligned and and uh, and and everything just works so well and being see exactly that you know through this really tough corner right here, you know that uh, there was a four mile per hour gain on the on new tires through that high speed left hand corner. So uh, little little things like that. So um, the software is very powerful uh, when you want to compare two laps. One thing we haven't done yet is we can go over here and look at the GPS map, what we call the driven line map. And if I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit, and there's that uh, there's that corner where the red one, you know, the red one was quite a bit slower, but he also pinched the corner off a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Dro mm -hmm. Drove that corner down to the inside mm -hmm. and uh, really tightened it up here in the middle, which, so this isn't all tire related. There was a little bit of a, a, a driver difference on that corner as well, that uh, mm -hmm. even with with the red lap with the older tires, if he'd have rolled through and and uh, and rolled into that corner the way that he was supposed to, it probably could have uh, probably could have gotten through there a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And and the lower speed and then going flat through there, already getting a lot of the rotation done. You can see here on the the, the, the lateral G's, the driver had to release the wheel to get the thing to actually start to move back out to the to the middle or to the outside edge of the track, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, the driver actually released the wheel and, and 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 started to head up the other way. Same thing with the brakes; it's a little odd. Hit the brakes pretty hard, and then and then uh, got back back after the throttle as well. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dab the brakes. Maybe there was another cart in front of him. You know, there's some things we could look at as well. But uh, the GPS map is also a, the driven what we call the driven line map is uh, which I have brought up here alongside my normal measures graph. To, to for a location on the track plus where the driver actually drove we can actually learn quite a bit as well uh, comparing one lap from one session and, uh, and and another lap on the other session that's the end of this aim learn fast video leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you want us to cover another topic visit aimsports.com if you want to learn more about micron products